Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. It's delighted to be joined virtually with Nathan and Amanda and Zach with their fantastic movie, Margaret. But for those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at the clip. You got a map on you? And the whiskey. Really great to have you all here. I, I, I've got so many questions, I can't even begin to start. I don't know where, where to start, to be honest with you. Um, but thank you so much for bringing Margaret to New Filmmakers. What a brilliant film. Uh, but for those that haven't seen it, whoever wants to take this, tell us the brief synopsis of the film. Uh, yeah, uh, it's the story follows Margaret as she um, sort of flees uh, an abusive marriage and is thrust into surviving uh, in the Olympic wilderness. Um, it's set in the late 1800s. And yeah, it's story, uh, a story of survival and perseverance and um, also sort of dealing with um, trauma, I guess, too. Um, she has a lot <laughs> on her plate that she's dealing with as she's also like uh, dealing with the environment that she's surviving in. So uh, yeah, I think that's a, a very brief synopsis uh, of the film. You played uh, you played the, the the part of Margaret and oh my goodness me, what a performance. It was absolutely amazing to see all the things that you kind of went through as well. We will come to you in a second. Where, just before we get into, into your role, Margaret, of, of the role, Amanda for Margaret, where did the inspiration come for you in creating this particular project? Because there was so much detail in there. It was, it was fascinating. It definitely has uh, pieces of all three of us in the project. I think the original inspiration was um, sort of from these, these post-mortem uh, photos and photographs that were taken around that time. Uh, it was sort of a, a, a boon in popularity, um, these like Victorian era photos that people would take with loved ones uh, because there was so much death at the time and there was so much loss that people were dealing with. This weird, almost like buttoned up way of dealing with it was to take these very stylized like family portraits. And that was like, that was their grieving period. And then you're supposed to be like done with it. And so it's sort of, um, I think was the initial inspiration and then uh, sort of Margaret's unraveling from that because there was no like dealing with the grief. It was like you posed with your loved one and then you're like, you're supposed to be over it that hangs on the wall and you stare at it for the rest of your life, I guess. I don't know. It's very, uh, it's, it's kind of haunting to look at these photographs, but um, I think probably each of us can talk about what individually, I guess, like connected to the project and it definitely was uh, a kind of uh, building and, and forming the project together. I wrote an initial script yeah. is nothing like the final draft that kind of came out. I brought it to Zach and Amanda and then we sort of like put our heads together and sort of built the world from there. But that was the initial, I think, inspiration for me. Well, Zach, you got a good, there's a good family dynamic going on here, obviously with, with Nathan and Amanda. Um, where, so, obviously Nathan brought it to you how, how does that how does how does your dynamic work together like what was the kind of process once Nathan brought it to you Zach yeah for this project um yeah Nate kind of had this almost fully formed idea in the script by the time he brought it to me and um and uh, all three of us spent a lot of time sitting down reading in and chatting about the characters and different elements and trying to figure out how to connect Margaret's story and what she's dealing with visually into this sort of travel, you know, piece and this travel kind of theme to it. Um, but um, it was, yeah, a lot of us just kind of late nights sitting around chatting about the characters and what all that means and the history of the time and um, kind of trying to melt that into one uh, short film in one piece. Yeah, well, Amanda, like I have to say, like you know, this is—I mean, it, it's got to be an actor's dream to take on a role at this. And you just articulated her journey, Margaret's journey, so unbelievable. I mean, it was amazing what you had to kind of go through. 
what was it like taking on a role like this? Because I was just thinking of you, thinking of how freezing cold it was, the high stakes you had to deal with, the energy you had to put into the film. What was that experience like? It was very thrilling. Um, it's interesting you mentioned the cold. I think the elements really made it easier to get to <laughs> the height of some of those emotional peaks a lot of times. Um, yeah, it was really thrilling. We did um, a lot of research, all three of us together and individually. So I think the coolest part for me was being able to go back and read actual accounts from women who sometimes similar things had happened to other times they just lived through their marriages, but reading actual historical accounts and then trying to bring stories that were true into the character of Margaret too. Um, yeah, it was a really special experience. It felt like kind of telling a conglomeration of true stories in our own little yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was definitely challenging, but really, really special and exciting to play her. Yeah. It, it was it was so great to see Margaret win. You know, I almost was, I was watching the film and I was just imagining because unfortunately, as I'm sure in your research you discovered, this was not an uncommon thing a way, you know, um, husbands treated their wives. You know, I almost wish that, we could go back 200 years and you know show this film as, a, as an idea of like what people have gone through and help people overcome and that there are hopefully more Margaret's out there that come out of these horrible relationships um going into the research was it quite distraught to kind of discover a lot of things that were going on and then of course there's a reflection of where we are today and we still got a lot of work to do as well yeah, I definitely reflected a lot on what options back then women had, what options they didn't have, how your fate kind of rests in uh, the hands of what your marital status is. Um, kind of was in a little bit of a dark place sometimes during filming, yeah. but, and then just making connections to how things have changed today, how they haven't for certain women, um, depending where you are in the world. So um, yeah, it was just a very fascinating historical study. We tried to tie in like the natural history of the Pacific Northwest and kind of what happened to people at that time too. So without even trying, it became very multi-layered. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it was, I mean, it was, yeah, it was the incredible journey to watch your character. I'm so happy that, you know, they just fought your way through in this, in this film. But um, listen, let's talk about the location because I was just in love with the, where you shot it, how you shot it. Obviously, it was in black and white. I, I, I really thought it was just shot so well. And I was I was exactly in the time period that you set for us. And I was also thinking to myself, this can't have been easy uh, with all this kind of exterior locations as well. You had to film. Tell us a little about the locations and how you kind of formed uh, your set. And the production design was so wonderful as well. We really filmed all over the place. Um, <laughs> there wasn't one location. And we like... like uh, we are fortunate enough to live on some property where there are some sort of um, places we can go and, and set up certain things. We filmed uh, certain tent scenes. We only had one studio set up in Zach's garage, actually. We uh, were able to set up some, uh, some like nighttime sort of tent locations. That was probably the most comfortable shoot. The rest was all. <laughs> um you're we probably in winter too so it was i think end of february maybe Ooh, yeah. March, and, and that's kind Ouch. of the most brutal time uh, in the northwest especially that's when it gets like heavy snowfall um yeah we we filmed up and down the coast we filmed all over washington basically just looking for these locations that could kind of emulate that um old growth uh forest kind of things you know you kind of have to seek out those trees where they're tall enough and big enough that is like is what it would have been you know in the the late 1800s so yeah I mean I think the most brutal spot for me was the the beachfront the final kind of thing because it was so cold and we were filming so early I'm sure Zach and Amanda can talk about uh, their <laughs> uh, favorite or least favorite location that we filmed in but yeah we were out in the elements for real so I will say one thing about the the beach because it, it did actually it was a total coincidence where I think we were on the peninsula and we're still looking for the exact location of the beach shoot, even though we were all out there and like at an Airbnb or whatever. And we had kind of had an idea, but as we were walking around like location scouting the day before, we came upon this beach that was um, covered in gold. And these oh. little sparkles on the black sand is literally gold in on the beach. And the wow. only other people on the beach while we were shooting were people who were panning for gold. 
And so it was also a very weird old timey experience to be shooting this movie and be like, literally, that's a gold miner over there. <laughs> wow. Gold. We had um, to talk to the gold miner about the tide situation. We're like, because we didn't know, like, we did research, but it's, we had to like ask him, like, so what time's the tide going back out? Because we like have to stop filming now because it's like too close to. It came in too close, yeah. Wow. Gold. Wow. So I hope you came wealthy on this short film then uh, from, from getting all the gold. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, how fascinating is that? That's, that's unusual and who would, who would have expected it? But well, I mean, listen, the locations were so, were so wonderful and, and the, the kind of the feeling you created. And of course, you know, it's not easy creating something that is period, even if you are doing a lot of it outside. Um, what were kind of some of the challenges or things you kind of had to face and, and kind of understanding the time period as well and, and, and costumes or anything? I mean, it, it looks so perfect in, in a time period, but was there kind of any extra things you kind of had to look out for in your research? We definitely did a lot of research into costumes. Um, we're all huge fans of uh, history um, and, and wanted to make it as histori historically accurate as possible while still fitting in our, our budget, which was um, non-existent. So, uh, I mean, for props and stuff, Amanda and I went on a lot of scouting like um, to different antique shops and stuff, um, just to find like little pieces here and there and the trunks and stuff that she was carrying on her back and all this different things. Um, but it was sort of, um, we just spent several months, I guess, piecemealing stuff together. I don't know if you have anything to add to that specifically. Yeah, we just did a lot of research and tried to be as specific as we could. We had um, a costume kind of consultant, I guess, from a local theater company. Um, Victorian era, particularly morning clothes are so specific and they change from year to year. So we had someone get us exactly the correct Victorian morning outfit down to the gloves they would have worn because of what year it was. So yeah. definitely a big learning process. And um, we would buy certain props from the antique shop, then go do research and like, oh, this is 20 years into the future. They would not have this on the table. <laughs> like, yeah, definitely um, a lot of very specific research. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so glad you shared that because honestly, I, I, I felt it was so spot on and, you know, and it goes to show for any filmmakers that are watching this that, you know, it's really important to do the research and, and understand the time period that you're doing as well. Um, again, I, I'm just so enamored by your performance, Amanda. I, I really thought you just gave in such a wonderful performance. I'm just so curious, like taking this to film festivals. And, and putting it out there. I mean, I feel like I'm watching a feature film. It really felt like a condensed feature film. It was, you know, so much was going on in it. What did you, what, what did, what's kind of the audience reaction been? And adding to that, like, what did you kind of want your audience to take from your film as well? I mean, it's been difficult mainly because this is like our first, you know, especially for all three of us as a collaborative project, this is our first short film. Um, that we've had out in festivals and it's been during the pandemic. So you can't really, um, I guess, really gauge that audience reaction yeah. um, as much as you could, like sitting on a theater and like looking around and being like, oh, okay, this, <laughs> that person's traumatized, but that person seemed to like it, you know? Uh, so there really hasn't, you know, we haven't launched it uh, publicly yet. It's still in the festival circuit. I think um, maybe once we do, it, it will kind of have that virtual audience feedback but um so far it it's it's it has been hard to gauge um because it's all been virtual and i think uh i we've loved attending this festival because it, it's it feels like it's kind of our first time to like talk about it and kind of uh i guess go a bit more in depth um so very appreciative of, of this festival specifically but yeah, it's been a weird time to kind of have a, a, a short film screening because you yeah. don't, don't you don't have that audience immediate audience saying we're like, did they applaud at the end or or not? You know, yeah. <laughs> for the people we have showed it to, it has been a a, a very positive reception, and uh, I think uh, I don't know maybe Zach or Amanda can speak to the the message that they hope people uh, take away from it. I guess uh, post screening, but. Um, that's what I have to say, I guess, I, about yeah. audience reaction specifically. It's been very interesting uh, during the pandemic to have it in festivals, certainly. Yeah, Amanda, what, what fit for you and Zach too as well, what do you kind of want your audience to sort of take from your film? Hmm. I, I think people, there's a general knowledge that all throughout history, women have been treated for hysteria, um, which is basically having normal and human emotions after something awful happens. 
Um, but I just personally haven't encountered many stories or many films about that, where you see that happen kind of from the woman's perspective. So it was really important to me to be able to tell the story of a woman who went through that and didn't just fall victim to it and be yeah. the ending of a sad story. It was really cool to be able to bring that story to audiences, um, you know, that women in the late 1800s and all throughout history even if maybe it seems like you don't have options, there have always been women who will fight to find those options um, yeah. as wise it is or not. And kind of on that token, I will say anyone we've shown it to who knows us personally, I think is just taken aback because they hear like, oh, you made a short film. They're probably not expecting 1800s black and white violence <laughs> and drama and adventure. So I think the only reaction that I've been able to gauge so far is people just kind of like, oh, <laughs> didn't know it was going to be that. <laughs> I think people are surprised at the scope of the story where it does feel like by the time you've got the end, people do feel like they've watched a feature film, even though it has a runtime of 17 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's, and, 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 and Zach, I, can't, I mean, I can't believe collectively together, this is like your first film together. Like it looks like you've been, you know, you're in your 40th film or something. Like, I couldn't believe how epic it was and you just began this like Zach what's it kind of been looking back on this film and and and, and kind of what are you hoping to do together again next um yeah it was a great a great process and um a great time and I think yeah we also all individually learned so much and um yeah exciting to see what what's next and what we what we keep doing um I think for me one of the interesting takeaways from it was also the and kind of I think something we talked about together and, and we were developing was inverting the western a little bit um mm. you know largely just swapping the uh traditional gender roles of it usually being yeah. some kind of a leading man in your western on top of visually I think inverting it and in choosing to go black and white and we shot it in color and we shot it um at probably 16 9 but we had planned to widen crop it even more and do like maybe even some of the old cinema scope or early western kind of visual and have it very wide and feel very mm -hmm. saturated in color and very wide and open and after we had shot it and we're working with the editing we had the decision to make it full frame and black and white and we had there were things in the wings of the image that we had shot that were there that we were just didn't found out that we didn't need and we were able to mm -hmm. crop it to a square and remove those sort of things on the side and focus the audience in on just what was happening. Um, you know, the box element obviously also kind of worked visually with Margaret's journey and her being trapped and trying to escape that. Um, but yeah, I think the we were trying hard to kind of invert the traditional Western style yeah. of, of doing it and how it was delivered and how it was received. Um, I think that was kind of one of our, at least my greatest, uh, uh, feeling of achievement for the movie was kind of turning that on its head and seeing what you know came out on the other side even down to the music too and, and Zach yeah, um, brought, brought an amazing score to the project too um, which I think definitely helped influence everything like I think I had cut up a clip of of sort of Margaret's journey through the Olympics and then Zach like bounced back a score like here try this um see if this fits in and it was the the mark the theme song that's sort of that weird bouncing synth and the um it's it's I think that helped yeah kind of with that inversion to the western of like the most unwestern like music you could think yeah. of <laughs> this weird synthy like um definitely gave it that it when I heard that paired with the visuals I was like okay that's like that's something cool, <laughs> like something different. Yeah, like, yeah, you did a great. You did a fan. You just the score was phenomenal. The cinematography was phenomenal, and the sound was perfection. You know, I mean, it was so crisp. I felt like I was there in this the experience. All those elements were just so elevated and need to be for this time period to kind of capture it as well. Like they were all brilliant so 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 well done i honestly felt like it was just the most perfect full you know full rounded short film it really was you, you all put so much effort into it into every element and you know it works so fantastic i'm excited for what's next for you all hopefully it won't be as cold this time wherever you're gonna go next <laughs> or who knows 
Uh, but we only is, film in the winter. <laughs> the only <laughs> film in February <laughs> in the coolest places. Yeah, that's our that's our through line for all our films. <laughs> I can just all the magic just covered in foil just on this set, just, you know, trying to keep warm. Um, but what what is next for you? This is like a dream team here. We have several projects in the works. Um, Zach's working on a feature now. Um, me and Amanda just wrapped another short film, and we have some feature screenplays in the works. So. Yeah, as far as, you know, uh, all three of us collaborating, I'm, you know, we haven't set a specific project yet. We kind of uh, have Margaret in the festival circuit and we kind of have launched sort of uh, a couple separate projects, but um, I'm sure it's going to be something exciting, whatever, uh, whatever. Yeah. It is. Um, um, very, very exciting. Well, well what, what, uh, just because obviously now looking back on making this project again, I really think you set yourself with up with a brilliant challenge of making a film like Margaret. Um, looking back, what have you kind of maybe learned from the experience and, and maybe any advice for anyone else that's trying to, you know, particularly make a, a film in this particular, you know, genre as well in this time period? And, and what are some of the things that you may have learned that you could share with the audience? I, I will say one thing, because you mentioned the sound. We made the decision largely for time and budgetary reasons to not have any production sound. There were no microphones on set. Everything was done after the fact, including all of the dialogue. Wow. Which, which if you're an independent filmmaker trying to do something short, quick with the time you have, my gosh, did that save time, obviously. After the fact, however, <laughs> was another mountain to climb uh to not only do the foley stuff but to do every piece of dialogue and then recreate it in a way that was plausible and believable to be added into the visual was quite an interesting learning process and i hesitate to say whether having looked back on it whether it was the right decision or not um but uh it certainly saved so much time and money on set so something to think about i guess yeah <laughs> say, it was like making whether... a whole nother film when we were done and we had to do it like now yeah. we'll make the podcast like it was basically like starting over a bit in that sense but it did save a lot of time and money we were able to film very quickly in very noisy locations like we would not have been able to capture audio on the beach purely yeah, because no the way. wind was going like 30 miles an hour like off, like ice wind coming off the coast so it would have yeah been been nearly impossible we were shouting at each other and it there was a like uh, screen we were like five feet away the coast uh, guard had a rescue operation at one point on the cliff literally like right out of frame there was a helicopter lowering oh, people goodness. in it just hovering right would have ruined the whole thing had we been trying to like oh. get audio so in that aspect that you know we were out in the elements we were in the snow we were hiking a mile up a trail to get a shot just being able to carry the camera gear and leave the audio stuff behind and not worry about it saved so much time. So, um, and then, yeah, we learned a lot afterwards. Um, you know, can't say whether we'd recommend it, I suppose, specifically, but it's something to think about. <laughs> no, that's such a, that's, I mean, because I was wondering what, how is this sound so crisp and how do they get that knowing the struggles of filming in the locations that you were at as well? So I, that's a really clever, clever move that you, that you all made together, really fantastic. And finally, for you, Amanda, is there anything you've learned from this experience, maybe performance-wise or being part of the journey in production uh, from this particular performance and this particular film? Yeah, um, it's a unique position, I think, to find yourself in, but a lot of filmmakers, I think, more and more act in their own projects. So being in that unique position, I guess I learned to, like, to the fullest extent possible, draw boundaries for yourself between when you're an actor and when you are a producer working on production. Um, the times that I didn't draw those boundaries, my head was just full to bursting and I was out of control of my emotions. Like, make it easier on yourself by uh, drawing some boundaries. Yeah, even if yeah. it's like a little bit of time that you set aside in your head to focus on one element. Um, I definitely learned a lot more about how to do yeah. that. Right mm -hmm. Well, you put your whole full self out there and it really, I mean, you know, Margaret was just a, 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 a wonderful character to watch on the screen. So. Thank you all. This is a dream team. I can't wait to see more of your projects together and individually, but thanks so much for bringing Margaret. It was a, a brilliant, brilliant film. So thank you from us and everybody at New Filmmakers LA. So thank you, thank you. And thank yeah, you so thanks. Much. thanks so much.
Thanks for having us. Awesome.